<laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is Tony from Sox Studios and today we've got a quick tutorial for you on how to create a ghosting effect. Something you might see on a closed caption TV, um, you know, kind of in a movie, the ghost of effect where, you know, you can get the jump cut scare. I'm going to show you how to do that today. It's real quick and real easy to do, so let's just jump right in and get started. So after you've got your picture open, uh, I'm going to use this one because she just looks really evil. Um, first thing you want to do is go ahead and duplicate your background layer. Now you can do that by holding Control or Command on the Mac and pressing J, or you can just right click on it if you prefer and duplicate layer. And we want to name it something that we're going to remember. So in this case we're just going to desaturate this layer so let's name it Desat. Okay. Alright, once we've done that we're actually going to desaturate it. So the way we do that is make sure the Desat layer is selected and we're going to hold Control Shift and press the U key. So that's Control Shift U to desaturate and you'll see it kind of turns it into grayscale or black and white. So now we're going to duplicate the layer again and as uh, just like before control J or command J on a Mac or we can right click and duplicate layer. And I'm just going to right click for the purpose of it's easier to rename that way. So we're going to call it M Blur because we're going to add a motion blur to this. Uh, so make sure M Blur is selected and we're going to go up here under filter Blur, Motion Blur. Now, depending on the picture you're using, the settings might be a little different. The angle should pretty much always be at zero, but the distance is negotiable. Now, for this particular picture, 90 seems to work pretty well. Um, you know, it's all dependent on how blurry you want to make it. In this case, we're going to go with 90 and go ahead and choose OK. Now, as you might see, it's made it a little too blurry in some areas, but that's easily corrected. So what we're going to do is come down here and we're going to add a layer mask. So right here, let's click our layer mask button with M Blur selected. Now we've got a layer mask. Now in previous tutorials I've mentioned about masks and how they work, but in case you've not seen those, when you have your mask selected, and you can tell if it's selected because the little white box will be around it, when it is selected, you're going to make sure you have black and white as your foreground and background colors. Now if black is f your foreground then when you select your soft round brush brush tool and you want to make sure you're on a soft round okay, and you can resize the brush however you need it by using this little slider bar or using the open and close brackets on your keyboard. Now black takes away and white adds. In this case we want to take away some of the blur in certain areas so we're going to make sure black is selected it is and we're just going to hit certain areas now depending on how much you want to take away I would recommend moving the opacity down to somewhere around between 10 and 15 percent and we're just going to hit a few little key areas to straighten up a little bit doesn't have to be much we just want to get a little bit of the definition back in the face Okay, so now that we've got our M Blur selected and we've taken away from our mask, just like we planned, we're going to go ahead and merge all these layers into one new layer. And the way to do that is hold Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter E. Okay, and then you see now you've got a new layer, which is deemed Layer 1, and we're going to call it Merged because that's everything merged into one. So if you turned off all these other layers, you see that's unaffected. So now that we've got that, we need to do a diffuse glow. Now, the easiest way to get there is just make sure you have your merged layers selected. Go up to Filter, go down to Filter Gallery, and under Distort, you're going to have Diffuse Glow. Now, one thing I'm going to mention is, is your picture might need to tweak the settings a little bit just like with anything. The graininess, I would say between 3 and 5 depending on your picture. The glow amount is generally low. 
you generally don't want a whole lot of glow. So, you know, you see it kind of darkens it as you go up. So, I would recommend something like one to none, depending on the photo. Clear mounts, generally I was going to be around 10. Now, if you notice in this area here that you've got some kind of crazy colors that you're not supposed to have, that's because for some reason you don't have your foreground and background set to black and white. Um, so, and it will change depending on how you've got it set. So, make sure you're always in black and white, which we should be since we were using the masks earlier. Now that we've added our diffuse glow to the merge layer, we need to give it that kind of greenish tinge that you would see in an old closed caption circuit television or security monitor. So what we're going to do is make sure our merge layer is selected. We're going to come down here and add an adjustment layer. And we're going to create that. And we're going to choose solid color. Now it's going to come up with our color picker. And we're going to go with a green, greenish color. You can choose whatever you like. I'm going to go with something in the fours. So you see 478F46 is what I'm going to use. You, you know, you can change that around however you like it, but this gives a pretty good realistic effect. We're going to go ahead and check OK. And now you see this big green blob has colored everything, but that's OK. We're going to make sure that is selected. That is our color fill one here. And we're going to come up here and change the style to color dodge. OK. And now it's starting to come together, but it still looks a little too intense. So this is where we're going to change the opacity of that fill layer just a little bit. So let's bring it down. And this again is negotiable depending on how much you want. You can bring it down to just a little or a whole lot. I prefer kind of something in the middle like this. Okay. And with that, that's it. It's really easy to do. It's a great effect if you're trying to do something a little bit spooky. Um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash psychstudios or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash psych underscore studios. Thanks again for stopping by. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll be glad to answer as anything I can. And if you have any requests, leave those too. Take care.